let me reiterate one thing that we should um, we should keep this refugee issue we should see it through a humanitarian lens not as a political from a political lens and if a person is involved in any criminal activities or in any negative activities this particular person should be tried he sh the, the government should take action against this particular uh, individual but the whole community should not be stereotyped stigmatized or generalized for this particular one person so these people need our compassion our kindness if they return back their life might be at risk thank you yes please go ahead please stand up if you can i can, i should come there or it's okay can hear me from yeah. here i just want to say for, uh, to pakistan security establishment all, as well as the government and all the political parties uh, for god's sake afghan refugees are human being do not treat the, them as football do not kick them and take them whenever you want to and however you want to please deal this problem with humanity and keeping in mind that nobody leave their home with happiness everyone has right to be at their homes there are people talibans are murderers talibans are the killers how can we risk the lives of the those individuals and communities individuals who work on human rights individuals who are working on culture communities who are under th threat like hazaras in afghanistan do not send them back because afghanistan has become a slaughter house for them and they are not sure when they cross the border whether they will reach their home or no so please treat them as human on the ground of humanity i'd like to turn to the audience now if there are questions directly for someone here up on the panel um yeah. is there a mic in the room is there a mic in the room right um now who, who's going to ask the first question yes the lady in red Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Isha, and I am from Government College, University Lahore. My question is from Miss Christina. Uh, that isn't it too much pressure or too much burdenizing uh, for Pakistan to deal with humanitarian issue uh, while we see that uh, USA left Afghanistan burning behind, and there are so many other countries like Turkey and Iran. They are also doing some repul uh, Afghan repulsion. and people are not uh, asking questions as as they are asking questions to pakistan this is my question and my suggestion uh, will be that if the international community make this happen in afghanistan they then they will talk to the government over there that they have put the sanctions in afghanistan but they are not going to uh, go for like uh, negotiations with the afghan taliban so this condition is making um, the scenario over afghanistan in afghanistan very worse so i think that if the international community make this happen for like afghan government to lose the sanction or to give them the uh, opportunity to trade with other countries so that their condition will be better and their refugees will go back to their countries and they can have a good and better life living with their self esteem thank you um to respond to that question i think um what i am speaking to is pakistan's own national obligations international human rights law is speaking to pakistan or not speaking back these are pakistan's own international human rights law obligations the united states also has international law obligations 
There are other states, of course, that are involved and need to be involved in the solution. And I think all of the um, treaty bodies have recognized Pakistan for its decades of hosting the Afghan community as well as other refugees. But what I was speaking to is still something, it's international human rights law. Pakistan has obligations. Other states have obligations, but that does not change the fact that Pakistan does have international human rights law obligations that it undertook voluntarily when it ratified these treaties. Um, and I do understand that there, there is dialogue here um, amongst different parties. There is a, um, a solution strategy for Afghan refugees group. Um, I know that there are efforts to find practical measures uh, to address this, this dire situation. Um, but when Pakistan's delegation goes to Geneva to interact with the uh, committees that oversee the implement implementation of these treaties, Pakistan will have to answer some very difficult questions about the measures it has taken to implement previous recommendations. I gave you one sample. That was just one sample. The Committee Against Torture has made recommendations. The Committee on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. As I said, six um, of the seven committees that have reviewed Pakistan have all made recommendations that will help, um, I think, guide some of the policy making. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank, thank you. Can I ask a question? Um, just, just for those of us uh, who don't know, uh, Mr. Javed, you mentioned the four uh, waves of Afghan refugees coming into Pakistan. Could we have an idea of what proportion of those different waves are being sent back to Afghanistan? The, the fully settled ones or the ones who came post-2021? I think it would be helpful. Thank you very much. As Kaiser Saab mentioned earlier, we have different categories of Khan refugees here in Pakistan. Number one, undocumented, newly arrived, PR card holders, ACC card holders. They are different categories. So that's why the first undocumented was in November, October. The government started this expulsion drive and where they sent nearly 500,000 people which were undocumented. But this is very confused philosophy of cons because they have uh, different categories among the families. One sister has PR card, one might have child doesn't have any card, or a wife has a, a ACC card. So it's a family, uh, and that expulsion affects a whole family reunification. That's number one. Secondly, if you look at uh, the uh, uh, numbers of Afghan refugees, the second category comes nowadays. There is a talk about expulsion of uh, these ACC, Afghan citizenship card holders. Uh, they were registered in 2017 after the government uh, uh, took one decision to register. There were a there were couple of decisions of cabinet decision. Uh, there were registration of undocumented uh, refugees and the drive started in 2017-18 where they registered nearly 800,000. So this category as this time is being sent back. Uh, uh, two days ago, government of Pakistan allowed uh, three months extension to the PUR card holder. PUR card holders are the main category which can take benefits from all, they can access schools, they can access health services, they are most mandated and UNSCR mandated refugees in Pakistan. So it's very confusing. As I was talking about uh, the first wave, we had never ever had a authentic data of Afghan refugees. These numbers are on spec speculations and some categories, uh, they never came to centers for registration just because they are scared they might get to registration center or get arrested. That's why the, that's why the proper resource mobilization and resource allocation is not possible. And for the last regime who came nearly 700,000 people in Pakistan, all of a sudden there was Ukraine crisis and all the international priority and 
the resources were diverted to Ukraine and there was flash floods in Pakistan. That's why government was so busy in handling the situation. Of course, in Pakistan, there was 3.5 million uh, uh, flood victims across Pakistan and there were 700,000 Afghan refugees also affected in flood and they are still waiting for their fate. So, uh, we don't have any authentic data, thus we can't sit with the international community uh, to properly plan uh, uh, for their repatriation or resettlement or integration. That's very confused. And I really stress upon that we should have a reliable data and we should have a comes at least three to four years planning with the help of, with uh, international community or UN uh, uh, agencies so that we uh, plan their repatriation dig in a dignified manner. So thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, don't, I don't recall that we have ever had such a serious and meaningful discussion on the issue of Afghan refugees in Pakistan. I hope we have uh, been able to present to you not just the plight and the situation of the refugees, but also solutions and possible practical steps that can be taken both from the Pakistan side and from the Afghan refugee side. Sir, there is one more question from my side and it is uh, for the, all of the panelists. Uh, yeah, my yeah. question is that whenever we talk about Pak Afghan border, so there are always two sides. One uh, supporting the expulsion of refugees while the other su supports the retaining of Afghan refugees in Pakistan. But whenever we talk about Afghan, I have studied about this thing, whole thing, I have studied about this whole thing and came to note that Pakistani authorities and intelligence authorities have raised an issue where they are uh, uh, attaching this Afghan refugees issue with cross-border terrorism and smuggling issue. So they said that we, uh, Afghan, Afghanistan, yeah, Afghan refugees better treat this at a border between two countries rather than a line which they can pass easily. So what's your take on this? On the, sorry, on the cross-border? Uh, Pakistan authorities and agencies several times raised an issue that the refugees uh, which has passed continuously between two borders between Pakistan and Afghanistan have been linked to cross-border terrorism and smuggling. So what's your take on this? So as I uh, explained earlier that uh, if anyone is involved in any terrorist or criminal activities, the state, is, st state has the right to take action against that particular person rather than generalizing or uh, stereotyping or scapegoating or stigmatizing the whole community. So if someone is involved in any activity, the state should take action. And secondly, UN or UNHCR partners, uh, we as a shark, we only provide free legal aid and assistance to people who are victims. Either they are victims or they are not involved in any even petty crimes. So that's our services and we don't appreciate such uh, uh, behavior uh, so or I'm, these stereotyping I'm, I'm as well. I'm also in support of this thing, but I, I have compared this thing to US-Mexico border as well. Uh, can you listen to me now? Can you listen to me? Uh, sir, I have also compared this thing to the US-Mexico borderline. So, uh, it's uh, re really much same like Pakistan-Afghanistan border and US-Mexico border. But US did same as well. They have a very strict policy on Mexicans. So, although I am although I am in support of retaining the Afghan refugees in Pakistan, it is against the human rights. Uh, can I respond to that? I, I'm not sure if I understood the question. But uh, here as Pakistani citizen, as, as a citizen of global world, we definitely condemn all the illegal activities happening anywhere by anyone in the whole world, 
talking about the Afghan border, spin border, and Torham border. I have always talked about it, that there should be a very transparent check and balance situation at the borders, Afghan borders on both sides. There are many illegal things happening, we all know that. And the refugees who are going back, let me tell you, they are coming back by illegal ways. And of course, when there is no support by the forces, it cannot happen. And the refugees who came after post-August 2021, all of them did not have their legal documents. They gave bribe on our borders. The women were sexually assaulted and abused, and there are few cases of rape also on the borders. So these all things are happening. Although sitting here talking about an ideal situation, we can condemn it and of course, as a lawful citizen, we always go with the law, but there is a need to have a holistic security and check and balance approach on the borders, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to wind up now. Thank you very much for attending this session. Thank you very much for all your inputs and suggestions. I thank the speakers also for... Um, being being so acceptable of the problems we've had with the microphone and other things. Thank you very much, all of you, for coming.